A growing world population consumes more and more seafood, while the amount caught in wild fisheries is falling. There are limits to how much seafood can be provided by sustainable fisheries, so if we want to preserve wild fish stocks, we need to find alternative ways of producing our seafood. This is an issue of food security, but it also highlights an important area of potential economic growth. As part of its blue growth strategy, the European Commission wants to go some way to filling the EU's production consumption gap by promoting a significant rise in sustainable aquaculture. Aquaculture is the farming of fish, shellfish and aquatic plants and it's a highly varied industry. Around the world, aquaculture production has rapidly expanded over the last decades while it has stagnated in the EU. Today about half of all the seafood consumed in the world comes from aquaculture. There are several ways that aquaculture interacts with the marine environment. Good water quality is absolutely vital for farmed fish and shellfish. Therefore, aquaculture benefits from EU environmental legislation such as the Water Framework Directive and the Marine Strategy Framework Directive. The same legislation also helps ensure that aquaculture develops in a more sustainable way. One way aquaculture can have an impact on its surrounding environment is through a high concentration of fish in the farms. Fish excrete unwanted nutrients, which can also come from uneaten food. When the concentration of nutrients in a given area is too high, it can lead to a process called eutrophication, which depletes the water of oxygen and can lead to lifeless areas. At the local level, eutrophication can be avoided by placing farms in the most suitable locations where currents facilitate a wide dispersal of nutrients. Researchers are also looking at more effective types of food and breeding more digestive efficient fish to reduce the amount of nutrients produced by aquaculture farms. Some farm species like bivalves and seaweeds actually remove nutrients from the water and help prevent eutrophication. A traditional approach drawing increasing interest consists of farming these extractive species alongside fish that produce nutrients leading to zero impact farms. Innovative projects are being developed to make use of this promising approach. Like many other farming systems, aquaculture makes use of veterinary medicines, antibiotics and antiparasitics, which have been judged to have minimal environmental impacts if used in accordance with strict rules and safe limits. Antibiotics are generally used as a last resort, and recent improvements in farming practices are further reducing their need. In Norway, Fish farmers have cut the use of antibiotics by 90% while doubling their fish production thanks to the use of vaccines. There are also projects looking into the use of RAS as cleaner fish to eat the lice on salmon and brown trout and reduce the need for pesticides. It is also important to control the interactions between farmed and wild fish. If farmed fish escape, they can compete with wild populations for food and space or reduce their genetic variety through interbreeding. SKPs also represent an economic loss for fish farmers, so there is a clear incentive to prevent them. If wild fish and farmed fish come into contact, diseases and parasites can be passed from one to another. And a notable example is the spreading of sea lice in salmon populations. One way to prevent this is by placing fish farms away from the migratory routes of wild salmon, although the use of anti-lice treatments currently plays a role. In order to feed carnivorous farmed fish, aquaculture needs to gather wild fish. As the industry develops, it is important to keep this amount low and to ensure that wild fish caught for this purpose is fished more sustainably. Aquaculture has made great improvements in its environmental record. As the industry expands, it must continue to improve its environmental performance. This is essential to long-term sustainability, economic growth and food security. For more information, read our Sustainable Aquaculture Future Brief, available from the Science for Environment Policy website, where you can sign up to the free news alert.